Hey, buddy, come on in. Cooler in here in the shade. Did y'all hear about them two Catholic parents? I don't guess you did. <laughs> them two Catholic parents? You ain't even heard this one. You better listen close. This, this old gal went up to, to her priest and she said, Father, I've got two parents and they're both females. And she said, they're embarrassing me. I really don't know what to do. He said, well, what are they doing? She said, well, every time I come in the house or anybody else comes in there, them two female parents says, hey, we're hookers. You want to get naked? <laughs> he said, oh, oh, that won't do. That won't do. He said, I tell you what, I've got two male parents at my house. He said, I've trained them to meditate and pray and read the Bible. He said, you bring them over and put them in the cage and them boys, and they'll straighten them out. Well, she said, I'll do that. So she come over that afternoon to his place and had them female parrots in the cage and she held it up there and she looked in there and sure enough, Fred and Wilbur, they was sitting in there meditating and praying. And she opened the cage up and put them two females in there with them. And then unison, them females said, hey, we're hookers, you wanna get naked? And one of them male parrots said, Frank, Put them rosary beads up. Our prayers have been answered. <laughs> pretty good, ain't it? I like them animal stories. One of my favorite is these two monkeys is out in the jungle. I've had to clean this enough just a little bit. They uh, out there in the jungle. Sitting on a limb, one of them said, this is the boringest place I've ever seen in my life. He said, let's do something to stir up some action. And then one of them looked out there and said, hey, there's two lines on that tree. I'm going to run down there and kick one of them right square in the run. <laughs> and right there is where I cleaned it up. <laughs> so he ran down there and he kicked that line real good and hard. And when that line finally got his breath back, <laughs> you know where he kicked him now. He took off after that monkey. That monkey was going through the jungle from limb to limb, fine, fine, and he looked back and that lion was gaining on him. So he swung down into this campsite. And he, uh, he grabbed him a newspaper, put on a pair of sunglasses, and he sat down in a lawn chair across his leg and held that newspaper up in front of him. Lion come busting into the camp. <laughs> looked over and said, you see any monkey come through here? He said, you mean the one that kicked that lion in the rump? Lion said, damn, that in the paper already. all the way down. I didn't figure I'd need to be doing that. 
But I got to thinking, you know, when I was growing up, Mama and Granny, they could cook chickens and they had the same amount every time. Same amount of chicken. Two legs, two wings, thighs, you know, and neck and back, and carrying on like that. Now there's more parts than it's ever been. I mean, they've got every sort of thing. Planks, chicken planks. And uh, I never, we never could raise a rooster or a hen and had a back nugget hanging off of it. <laughs> Anyway, they just ruined the chicken as far as I'm concerned. So I wrote a song kind of in its honor here. It's called Look What They've Done to the Dominator Hen. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you very much, I <laughs> You know we sure are lucky to be living in the world today. With all this modern technology, we've come a long way. Even in the kitchen, they've made a lot of changes. The women went to using microwaves instead of electric ranges. I know that progress must go on even with the things we eat. And science is trying to improve upon the selection of our meat. But some things can't be improved on and to stress this point, my friends. Let us dwell for just a moment on the Dominicker hen. Bath fitter. Are you from Bath Fitter, ma'am? You don't buy like you know some 
talking about this. He looked up and went bad. Is that, is that somebody that puts it in the bowl and chair and things like that? Bad fitted? I don't know. I'm not from around here. It is. Did you say fix, fix up your bath bowl? Yeah, they put a bathroom on the bath bowl. We got a real good buddy that brought us up here in, in an airplane so we wouldn't have to drive. And, and I want to make mention of him. He said right here, it's Red Cow. This is Reese Howell. He was one of the finest fellas in the world. He spent his life flying airplanes and teaching people how to fly. He taught me how to fly. And uh, he lets me ride around with him every now and then. He's got about 35,000 hours of flying time. That's a lot of time up in the air and we uh, thank you Reese. Sure we're glad we didn't have to drive up here. That's a long way. I get in trouble driving. I, every time I seem like I got a track to a wall. I was up at Nashville here the other day and I went in the grocery store. Hadn't been in there five minutes to come back out there's a motorcycle cop riding the ticket. I said, hey buddy, how about giving a guy a break? He just kept on writing. I said, are you Delph? And he wrote another ticket. <laughs> so I called him a few things. He wrote some more tickets. <laughs> After about 10 minutes, I got tired of all that. I just went around the corner and got my truck and drove off. <laughs> State trooper not too long ago and he was trying to write out a ticket and there's this flag going all around up in here and he was knocking at it and he said that blame it get out of here what is that I said that's a circle fly he said I never heard of a circle fly I said guess yeah, what flies around the rear end of a horse most of the time <laughs> he said are you insinuating I'm a horse's ass I said no but you can't fool them circle flies <laughs> pieces right here called Sally in the Garden and the Sandy River Bell. <laughs> 